Shoots. All stealth speakers are designed to fit into standard 16-inch on center 2x4 stud bays. Under normal circumstances, you should make sure that the studs are on 16-inch centers by measuring. This should result in a clear 14 and 1 half inch opening between the studs. In new construction, place savers matching the speaker models being utilized should be installed when the job is pre-wired and before wallboard is installed. Installing the place saver instead of the actual speaker reserves the properly sized space for the speaker without subjecting the speaker panel to the construction environment. During the pre-wire phase, install your regular speaker wiring and attach it securely to the studs, leaving sufficient slack length to be able to connect to the speaker panel when it's installed. Back boxes available from Stealth may be used with the place savers if desired to form an enclosure or if required by code. But back boxes are not generally needed if the speaker is being installed into an enclosed cavity, such as a wall. Exposing the unfinished speaker to long periods of high humidity, as sometimes found on a job site, should be avoided. In any installation, the cavity or back box should be loosely filled with mineral wool or fiberglass insulation batting. After the wall board is installed, but before seam taping occurs, you should check the thickness of the wall board. If the wall board is thicker than one half inch, use the cardboard shims provided with the speaker. Taping the shims to the rear of the speaker panel prior to installing the speaker in the wall. Remove the cover overlay and keep it handy to provide proper speaker finishing information to the wallboard finishers. Remove the place saver and insert the speaker wires into the binding posts on the speaker crossover, noting proper polarity. Tighten the binding post securely using the provided plastic nut driver. Jiggle the wires and then re-tighten. Do not over-tighten, but you do want a snug fit. With smaller gauge wires, you can bend the exposed wire back upon itself prior to insertion to make better contact with the binding posts. Next, attach the speaker panel directly to the structural framing where the place saver was removed using the provided screws. The speaker panel has been pre-drilled with the proper number of mounting holes. Be sure that all of the screws are installed and that they hold securely to the framing. Do not use nails. At this time, test the speaker and wiring with an amplified sound source to ensure that everything is connected properly and working. Stealth speaker panels are designed so that when the panel is installed, the face of the panel is 1 16th of an inch beyond the finished surface of the drywall. This allows room for the joint compound to be feathered from the panel out onto the wall while keeping joint compound from building up in the active area of the panel. By placing a straight edge across the face of the panel, there should be a 1 16th of an inch gap between the straight edge and the wall. If the speaker panel face is not out far enough, then remove the panel and use chims to bring the panel face forward. At this point, the speaker panel is ready to be finished in the same manner as any other wallboard segment. You may turn the final wall finishing over to a qualified wallboard professional, or you may continue with applying the taping, mudding, sanding, and final finishing materials yourself. Keep in mind that it is the quality of the final wallboard finishing workmanship that will determine the quality of the installation and true invisibility of the speaker. The following are some wall finishing tips. Apply self-adhesive nylon mesh tape onto all the seams between the speaker panel and the adjoining wall board. Using standard or lightweight drywall joint compound, apply material over the taped seams using a good quality drywall trowel. Use as little material as possible, let dry, then sand thoroughly, removing any compound off of the panel face. Repeat this process until you have a smooth transition from the surface of the wallboard to the face of the speaker panel. When sanding, imperfections in the application of the joint compound appear. It usually takes a second or third application of joint compound and sanding to create a smooth and seamless finish. When applying the final application of joint compound, 
it's advisable to scrape a very light skim coat of joint compound over the panel face to remove any final minor blemishes. This skim coat should be thoroughly sanded smooth so that the pre-primed paper layer of the panel face just becomes visible. This ensures a smooth panel surface while making sure that finishing materials on the panel face are kept to a minimum. In no case should the joint compound on the central panel face be built up to more than 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch or 0.79 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters as excessive joint compound buildup will affect the performance of the speaker. It's a good idea to then paint a prime coat of wallboard primer over the speaker, which helps reveal any remaining blemishes. Fill and thoroughly sand any remaining visible blemishes. The speaker installation may be finalized using the same color materials as the rest of the wall, including light texture, paint, or normal weight wallpaper. Experience the freedom of Listening to the stinger, stuff is entirely new in the mind of the stinger. So what you can do is you can robust, impenetrable glass fiber radiating surface. It holds up against the even partial stability. Just in the speaker of the sun. For now, enjoy the fun talk. Our demonstration of this completely invisible 5.1 view. This presentation does not use the stinger. But here are the speakers you will be listening to. Three LR4Gs for left, central, and right. Right in the screen. Two LR6s for surrounds behind you. And four B30G subwoofers. Two behind you. And two in the wall in front of you. Enjoy the show. I like that, I like it.